Okay, uh, I was making up some uh, Profi uh, cables, Profi bus cables, and uh, I decided, hey, why don't I record this, because this has been uh, something I've been doing for the last 15 years or so. And the, to be honest, uh, I have had more problems with communication cables uh, than anything else. And the main reason is just crappy, unprofessional execution of what needs to get done to make a halfway decent communication cable. Profibus is a serial RS-45 uh, cable. Uh, the transducers are a little hopped up, uh, but they follow all the uh, RS-45 standards. So uh, two wires ground uh, and a terminating resistor on uh, each end is what you got to deal with so that's actually not anything that's uh, particularly uh, earth shattering but uh, they get uh, 12 megabyte communications you should do it correctly all right I just wanted to show sort of a typical example of what I'll find in the field all the time it would be something that looks like this friggin just a total mess uh, uh, you know you just can't believe an industrial engineer or electrician would consider that any kind of professional job it's just total crap uh, amazingly sometimes this stuff actually works but when you look at what a company is spending on a machine two to fifty million dollars lifeblood is communications and you see this shit all through the machine it's it's just disheartening and my whole career I've had to deal with this is kinda of why I'm really harping on it I'm just it's just amazing uh, that this in America goes for something that would uh, be acceptable uh, it's obviously crap so you know, you see that, the first thing is you just you just cut it off. There's no saving that crap. Alright. Next thing is you gotta have a tool. Here's a Profibus stripper. It's actually I think Wee Mueller actually makes these for every brand uh communications out there. Uh this one of course is sold by Siemens, but whatever. Uh you can buy these. Rockwell sells them for, you know, their communication cables. Uh, I'm sure GE probably does as well. It's got the blades. You can adjust them if they get out of adjustment through the end there. I don't know if you can kind of see the little hex screws in case your blades get out. The blades are replaceable. You can kind of see inside there. You can see there's a little cartridge. You can replace them if the blades get dull. Um, yeah, you know, they're 60, 70 bucks. But hey, let's say we're working on a typical machine. The guy spent five million dollars you're gonna say you're gonna do a crappy job because you know you don't want to use this. No, this is this is what you're gonna use. You're gonna use a butter knife or some knife. The guy he's got a, a hunting knife he he sharpened in 1982 and he's hacking away at the cable. That's crap. So go get the real one. You can buy them from any Siemens distributor. You can buy them online, whatever. Get a real stripper. And it doesn't matter if you're doing Rockwell work. Go get the real stripper. Go get the control net stripper. You know, don't be hacking at it with a razor knife and hoping you're you're doing it right. That's just silly. So anyway, nice thing on the side here, it, it shows you the different connector part numbers. Different lengths are needed uh, for all the different generations of of uh, you know stripper uh, lengths for different actual connectors. Um, and if it's not there, let's say you're using a third-party guy, like here, here's like a nice little Phoenix one. Uh, a little pricey, uh, but you know it's it's a decent little guy that's built correctly. You've got the little uh, switch so that you can terminate at the end, so the terminating resistor is already put in. Uh, the Siemens ones are the same way. Uh, you can buy them from your Siemens distributor. Uh, Phoenix, um, I think Harding actually has some. They're not quite as nice, but. Hey, they, they still are made to the specifications for the the uh, 
device so all you need to do is go get them uh, this this is the fast connect cables that are actually these vampire connections uh, but the nice thing is the Siemens ones and this Phoenix one here so they got the little window because believe it or not you got red and, and green half the time the problem is they got the green and the red and it's random through multiple connectors uh, you could actually have green and red if every one of your connectors was that way of course that would be crazy but it would work But the nice thing is in the transparent window it's a quick check uh, I guess the uh, the Germans uh, figured out the only way to get the Americans to do this right is actually put a window so you can quickly find the problem uh, almost every machine that I find someone else is wired at least one of these is wrong and no one's bothered to even look at it they call me out it's not talking this profi bus is crap that's usually the problem the other problem is uh, especially with the vampire ones is instead of the guy looking up the part number of the connector and using the appropriate strip length or at least even looking at it he'll just strip it too short the wires won't even go to where the electrical connections are there's no connection those are like two of the biggest things I find you know you'd think that would be so simple but not really so let's just say we got the standard connector which I know is that length you put this on you clip it in you spin it clip it again spin it clip it again spin it now it's done a couple things for you alright so that took all the jacket this little uh, transparent plastic uh, protection piece took that off took the inner jacket off then it made a second little uh, I don't know if you can see that but a little cut that is the outer jacket that it's taken off but it's left the shield and the braiding that's key that's going to be in any of these connectors that's going to uh, ground out to the ground plane inside the connector let me take one of these connectors off so I can show you how to how it actually goes in there just a second alright went and dug up a connector um, so I've stripped it uh, I didn't bother looking up the part number because I knew I had the standard fast connect style and I knew that actually that's these two part numbers but you can look the part number up or you can even look to where the vampire teeth are in the connector if it's that style or if it's a uh, one that has uh, screws like this guy does you know you make sure that you are actually going to get to the right point if it's got screws you obviously have to strip off the uh, the little ends and you know go ahead and use an actual wire strippers okay don't don't go trying to use something like this and and hack at it I mean that's let's get let's have some respect for ourselves our customers and do it right you know, the guy spent a friggin fortune for this machine and he's spending a lot for you let's do it right so you take it it's got green and red green and red there's two inputs You're in proper terms is an input and an output I don't know I can see this myself but I'm not sure if I can maybe get it on the camera so you can see it I think you can see it you gotta go in with the one that's got a little arrow in and that's gonna connect you into it the other one's got a little arrow out and a little switch symbol you're like what's the switch the switch is the switch back is a terminating resistor when you switch the terminating resistor on that's going to be the last guy in the line or the first guy right, you only terminate on the two ends like all of RS-42 so like there he's terminated now when he terminates he drops in the resistors that are built into the connector and then he opens up the output so the output is no longer connected obviously you're at the end you're not going to daisy chain to anyone else so he just opens that circuit and terminates this one so you always go in the in see how the shield is a little shield connection uh, inside you push it closed push it down hard get the vampires to actually stab into it um, 
I, mean, I don't have a lot of hand strength, so sometimes that's a little effort for me. But make sure you get them all the way down, because if you don't get them all the way down, you won't be able to get this little clamping strain relief bar to go down all the way. Okay, so he's down all the way. You can see he's closed, the plastic closed up. Now you've made a perfect connection. If, you, if this guy wasn't going to be on the end, you turn the terminator resistor off and you come out this other guy, like the arrow shows, the little arrow out, and you go to the next guy. And you daisy chain throughout your uh, all your devices. That's really simple. Doesn't take any time to do it right. But I've seen people screw around with this for 20 minutes doing it wrong. Again, trying to use their hunt knife that they break bricks on or something. Yeah, now I'm going to show you this. See where the vampires bit in? Not sure if that's going to show up, but there's little indentions. That's where the vampires bit into the connector for you. And that's it. That's all it takes. Now, if you're doing Profinet, it also has, it's actually the same tool, but with a different set of blades. Uh, and for the Siemens ones, the Siemens Profinet, the Ethernet cable is green. So they made this green. This is the purple cable for Profi Bus, often called the Barney cable, purple. Um, again, if you're going to make Profi Net connections, buy the Profi Net stripper. It works exactly the same way. Everything's the same. So, anyway, I decided just to show that because. 15 years of seeing it done wrong. I said, hey, I'll put a video up while I'm making up some profi cables for uh, uh, setting up for a customer uh, for a service call. So anyway, that's all there is to it. Good luck.